What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 48 and we start today's episode off on our big demolition job in North London as we won big against last year's runners-up Arsenal by four goals to nil. Heading into the first game of today's episode and the letter away in Belgium match day three in the Europa League group stage. And after winning back to back to start the games off here in the Europa League, we knew win this game here in Belgium and qualification is basically already in the bag, a top spot probably as well. So taking on Anderlet here, Vincent Company's old team, feeling pretty confident heading into the game, but I almost gave Anderlet a gift in the first five minutes. And to start the season off, I've got to say, I've been pretty good at, you know, eliminating silly mistakes. But I am human, believe it or not. I do make mistakes every now and then. And that was an awful, awful thing there. I don't know what on earth I was doing with Anthony Robinson. Almost gifted Anderlet a goal to make it 1-0. But eight minutes in, from the corner, we head it clear. hudson Adoy sprints down the right-hand side. And in the last episode, I sung his praises. And I think I need to sing them a little bit more as well. You know, there are certain players that are just so consistent. And you just, you don't really bat an eyelid. Because they're always in the team. And they always perform. You take it for granted. Do you know what I mean? You take it for granted. That's hudson Adoy in his Everton team. Never puts a foot wrong. Like, it's, I, I could probably count on one hand the amount of games he's played for me. Or I felt I performed poorly with him. He always does a really, really good job for me. I've got to start singing his praises more, man. He's been an amazing, amazing signing. What a bargain from Chelsea he's been as he scored the opening goal. Anderlet would level it though right before the break. Once again, a bit of a gift there. And, you know, I say this all the time. Against the Aaron Ultimate, if you make a mistake, you'll probably get punished. But a couple episodes ago, we were talking about the referee and decisions in FIFA being incredibly inconsistent and really, really poor. Yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes you just kind of have to think, well, EA have got to look at this and say, it shouldn't really be happening, should it? Right before the break, we were given a miracle and a lifeline and a case of the referee needing to go to spec savers. What on earth is that a penalty for? And, you know, back in my old days, my old career modes, I used to chip penalties down the middle if I didn't think they were penalties or if they were debatable. This one wasn't even debatable. It just wasn't a penalty, flat out. Yet the referee gave it for God knows what reasons. I've got to chip it down the middle. Old school docks on display there. And in the end, the keeper dives to his left. And DCL gets a goal from 12 yards. Awful decision. Absolutely awful. I don't know how on earth the referee thought that was a pen there. That was one of those moments where VAR surely would have chalked it off. Although, to be fair, considering VAR, probably would have stood. But even so... Terrible, terrible decision there, but given we take advantage, chip it down the middle, DCL converts the 50-50 pen there. I can't even dress it up. It wasn't the bait, it just wasn't a pen. But even so, in the second half, Anthony Robinson, who uh, wasn't having the best game for us, made it 3-1, gave us a two-goal cushion, but then later on in a really good game here in Belgium, Matt, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Goper goes through 1-1, one -on -one, and a little bit unlucky there. I guess you could say karma kind of bit me back there. A little bit unlucky, and let take advantage of that moment there, make it through to, through to the back in the game. Really great game, to be fair. And let just did not give up in the entire game. Really awesome fight. Fight, but in stoppage time, in a man and die going through one on one, rounds the keeper and pops it in to the open goal. You'd love to see it 4 2, points wrapped up in stoppage time. I love this guy, man. I love those squad players. You don't play for you very often. Whenever they do play, they normally do quite well. Scored in the FA Cup final last year, lest we forget, and also scores the dagger there in a 4 2 victory. So great to see it. Three wins from three, and qualification now is in the bag. Already halfway through the group. When the group was joined, to be fair as well, I was like, oh, it's, it could be a tough group here. You know, Andalair, Azel, Altmar, Derry City as well. But instead, it's actually been really routine. Three wins from three, and to be fair, all right, okay, I haven't been at my absolute best against Andalair. Even against Azel, Altmar, I only won it by a goal to nil. But even so, job done, we're through, and our one more win will guarantee top spot as well. But to be fair, though, like I, I said in the last episode, we beat Arsenal 4 0. It was a really anticlimactic game. Game for a battle between the top two. Uh, I, I, I know, like, I know sometimes it sounds a bit weird when I say this, but the truth of the matter is, I, I prefer those games. Like, I, I genuinely do prefer the games that are much tighter, much more intense, really, really, really hard, as opposed to dominating. Yes, every now and then, 
like a dominant win does feel nice don't get me wrong but only every now and then for the most part i really like when the games are really tight and really really hard fought like this one here following game taking on the eagles uh, no longer patrick vieira's crystal palace here at goodison park and heading into the game took the lead from stephen mavadidi but luke yo which would equalize soon afterwards after the kaku at the post very briefly on crystal palace i have to say you know the second of patrick vieira certainly raised some eyebrows no doubt about that for the most part i think a lot of managerial seconds this year as we know Obviously, you know, two at Southampton, Hassan Huttle and Nathan Jones, Steven Gerrard getting sacked by Villa, Lampard being sacked by Everton, Jesse Marsh by Leeds and so on. There's been quite a lot of managerial sackings this year, but for the most part, people have sort of thought, yeah, yeah, probably the right call there. And for the most part, it's worked. Other than Nathan Jones at Southampton, obviously with Leeds it remains to be seen, but for the most part, the sackings haven't haven't been you know too too bad of decisions but for crystal palace lots of raised eyebrows with Patrick Vieira and I discussed this very briefly a few episodes ago. I have to say I like Steve Parrish normally gets these calls right. Steve Parrish normally gets these decisions right. So you know you have to wait till the end of the season before you can judge it. Of course don't get me wrong. But I have to say I really I really thought I was quite a quite a suspect one like, don't get me wrong obviously I you know I understand they've had a really 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 poor run obviously in a really poor winless run but you know I, I I still think they're more than a good enough team to stay up and you know for a team that, uh, you know in transition trying to build something they've got a really exciting young core Crystal Palace to be fair like I'm I'm quite surprised that Patrick Vieira was sacked I I was very surprised about that, and like, I don't know who's going to take over. By the time this video goes up, they might have already got a new manager. But as things stand right now, like Roy Hodgson, a return for Roy Hodgson, who took over from Frank De Beer many, many years ago now, is looking the most likely to take over Crystal Palace. That, to me, sounds like they're taking a step back, which I just don't really understand. Like, I really don't. Listen, if they stay up, then fair enough. You could say Steve Parrish has got it right. But like I said a moment ago there, I think Palace would stay up anyway. Like, I think Palace would stay up whether it's Patrick Vieira, Roy Hodgson, or anyone, you know, for the most part. But interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. And whilst I agree with most managerial seconds this year, I think most have been the correct call. That one, to me, really surprised me. And it's one of the things that kind of irks me a little bit with modern day football managers especially young managers as well not given enough time they go into a poor run and suddenly the chairman the powers that be are too trigger happy i understand new manager bounce is a thing we see it happen all the time happens all the time but personally speaking i think palace are too good to go down anyway so why not keep Vieira for the end of the season you know if morale doesn't improve then so be it but chance of them going down i think you know, quite slim regards, at least in my opinion. But anyway, we lost the game 2-1, our first defeat of the season there. Wilfred to half score late on. I don't know how I lost the game. I played really, really well. Had loads and loads of chances. Just quite frankly, didn't take them. So I said, I don't know how I lost the game. I just told you how I lost the game. But even so, first loss of the season, our own to Crystal Palace. Really disappointing there against the Eagles. And then the following game midweek, Wolves away at Molyneux. I did have some stars out there for this game. You know, I talked about before, Carabao Cup, my lowest priority. But in this game, I did have some stars out there for this one. I thought I'd won it later on through James Garner. But Wolves equalised with like the final kick of the game. So many late goals start this season. Off. So it will go down to the spot kick. So everyone was thinking, right, put your money on Wolves, man. I think Bookie suspended odds on Wolves going through as soon as the spot kicks were announced. But spot kicks it was. Stanek saved my first and second penalties as we led by a goal. And after Illiman Undai, who scored a couple of games ago, made it 2-0, I was thinking, oh my god, I might win the shootout. And after Huang He Chan was denied, Yindrich Stanek, who started both the game against Accrington Stanley and tonight as well. He made a brilliant save in normal time as well and made himself a bit of an Everton hero, at least for the night. Because after James Garner, who scored our goal in normal time, sent the keeper the wrong way with our third penalty. Well, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is something you probably won't see again for another few years with me on FIFA. I saved every penalty. I scored every penalty. Yep, you don't see it very often. I could probably count on one hand the amount of times that's happened with me in my YouTube career, if you will. But it's a picture-perfect 100% penalty shootout from Doxy Boy. Yeah, I can't believe it either. Stanek saved them all, we scored them all, and we are through to the Carabao Cup. 
quarterfinal. So, yes, disappointing loss to Crystal Palace. We bounced back in midweek into the last day of the Carabao Cup. Two years ago, we reached a final. I'd love to get to Wembley once again in my fourth straight season. If we're going to do it, we're going to have to come through. <laughs> Liverpool away. Yep, Mersey side derby away at Anfield. Carabao Cup quarterfinal. And I've got to be honest here, don't get me wrong, we demolished them in the FA Cup final last year at Wembley, but I don't think Lightning will strike twice. They're off to an amazing start this season domestically. Seven wins in nine, they're top of the table, one point clear of us, and now the only undefeated side remaining in the division, I think our Carabao Cup run might end there at Anfield as they'll look for revenge after last year's FA Cup final drubbing. But that will end today's episode of the Realistic Rumor, guys. Big fan you watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you haven't, just like. Most of you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you for the next episode of the Realistic Rumor. Very soon.